this train station on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro, Lira Pacheco and her sister took their places long before daybreak. They sell coffee and cookies in a last-ditch effort to make money during the pandemic. I had a job before. I'm a teacher. It's difficult to work now during the pandemic, especially with children. This is our only source of income, the only way to make ends meet, so that we can buy rice and beans. But like for many people here, things weren't exactly easy for her before the pandemic either. Lack of affordable housing is a major problem here, with an increasing number of people enduring precarious living conditions. Lira Pacheco and her family share this property originally owned by her grandfather with two of her sisters and their relatives. Only the inner courtyard and garage remain for the grandmother, her grandchildren, and her unemployed daughter. Lisa Pacheco built the makeshift dwellings with her own hands and put up separating walls. It's a provisional solution, but she can't even call this modest dwelling her own. If they decide from one day to the next to throw us out, then me, my daughter, and my grandson won't have a place to live. We'll have no place to stay. That's why we need an alternative, so we know where we can go. The dire housing situation is worsening in the region. Official figures show that in Duque de Caxias, situated outside Rio, almost 350,000 residential units were lacking in 2020. The poor areas are continuously expanding. Many of them are built without permits, waste transport, or sewage systems. These issues pose a problem for residents as well as for the environment. The search for a way out led Lira Pacheco to these abandoned grounds in the city center. In 2014, she occupied this huge state-owned property with the housing movement MNLM. They brought the sustainable housing project Solano Trinidad to life. Hi there, how's it going? How can I help you? They build the apartments themselves. Their first endeavor is in this building with enough space to accommodate 12 families. Those who can help do so and learn in the process. Edivaldo Gomez is among the most experienced people here. He repairs buses at night to support himself and spends every free moment building apartments. We always work in pairs. One applies the mortar and the other lays the bricks. The project relies on alternative building techniques and materials, like walls made from self-pressed clay bricks. This presents unique challenges. I thought we wouldn't be able to do it, because it's so new and the work is so detailed. But we managed it. And what we learned will stay with us forever. In the future, we want to be able to use what we learned elsewhere and even offer our services to the job market. In the future, they intend to build more housing units and sell them. Sand, cement and clay are mixed with water and then compressed. Residents learned this simple technique in a workshop. There is an ecological concept for the entire grounds of Solano Trinidad, including its own farm. Edivaldo Gomez is very proud of the collective fruit and vegetable garden. This is where toilet water from my apartment is purified. We'll do the same with the new apartments as well. We can purify toilet water for 20 years at a cost of around 550 euros. And another advantage is that you can harvest bananas for 20 years. This kind of eco-friendly water purification is a model for the entire region. 
where it's common for large amounts of sewage to flow into local bodies of water. Since the occupation seven years ago, Edivaldo Gomez has been living in this rundown building. In the beginning, he was in very close quarters with other families. The majority of them have since moved. Because the project lacks funding, it will take a while before all of the new apartments are finished. Even though Brazil's current government has cut advancement programs, Gomez won't give up. It means that a dream will come true. It's a dream that we've fought to achieve, with small steps, of course, and a lot of difficulty. Life is hard here. When it rains, it really pours. It comes down here and there and everywhere. But the project is still worth it. Without it, I wouldn't be able to afford anything here. The idea behind the Solano Trinidadje project is to combine living with working. The group intends to erect more than 100 residential units, in addition to education centers for alternative building techniques, production halls, and sales rooms. The drafts come from architecture students, and the project members have a lot of exchange with different universities. Each apartment is 55 square meters, and the residents decide themselves how they're divided up. The model unit is already complete. We're deciding now whether or not to put a door here. We had originally planned just an entrance door, which would open here like a veranda. When exactly Lira Pacheco can move into the first house of her own depends on donations. That's how the first 12 apartments are being financed. My hope is that my grandson, my daughter and I can live here soon, that we can have a respectable home with water and electricity, one that's quiet. That would be best, and to know that it belonged to us. Her vision for Solano Trinidadje goes far beyond her desire for a house of her own. She hopes it becomes a role model for sustainable community living and working, a true inspiration.